Hello everyone, this is Teach My Channel and I'm Sarah. In this video, we'll talk about hypertension treatment options. It will be divided into two parts. In this part, we will discuss the sympatholytic agents, and in the next part, the rest of treatment options. If you watched the regulation of blood pressure video, then you can recall this diagram that we have built together. This is how the central nervous system controls our blood pressure. If it's low, it will rise it, and if it's high, it will lower it through the sympathetic activity. So let's imagine someone with hypertension. Then, if we want to lower the blood pressure, we can use this regulation by inhibiting the sympathetic activity of vasoconstriction, increased heart rate and contractility, or even when it release. And that is why we call it sympatholytic agents. For example, beta blockers, alpha-1 antagonist, and alpha-2 agonist. And we will talk about each one of them separately. So, let's get started. Beta blockers. Beta blockers are divided into selective and non-selective. Selective means it works on a specific receptor, and here we are interested in beta-1, since it's found in the heart. Example, atenolol, pisoprolol, and metoprolol. Non-selective means it works in any beta receptor, either one or two, like propranolol and timolol. Just to make it simple, it always ends with olol. So, we said in the heart we have beta-1. And to remember this, how many heart do you have? You have one heart. And beta-2 is found on the lungs. And how many lungs do you have? Correct, two lungs. So, how does beta blocker help in lowering your blood pressure? I'm going to bring up this diagram again and show you where beta-1 receptors are found. In the heart and in the kidney. So, let's think. If I blocked beta-1 effect on the heart and kidney, then I'm decreasing my heart rate and contractility, as well as I can decrease or inhibit the release of renin, and this will help me in lowering my blood pressure. However, this comes with side effects. In the heart, we said it blocks the beta-1, so it can cause bradycardia, arrhythmias, and hypertension. That is why we don't use it as a first-line treatment, but in people with heart problem, like acute coronary syndrome. If you use non-selective, it means it will work also in the beta-2 receptors found in the lungs, so it can cause bronchoconstriction. And here, a very important clinical point, never use non-selective beta blocker in someone with asthma because you will trigger a severe asthmatic attacks, something that we don't want. It also disturbs the glucose metabolism, causing insomnia, and also sexual dysfunction. And because of these side effects, it can mask some of the symptoms of hypoglycemia, like shakiness, palpitations, and anxiety. And lastly, it can cause weight gain. Alpha-2 agonist. This is a centrally acting alpha-2 adrenergic agonist like clonidin and methyl dopa. It works on the upper center, alpha-2 receptors. Exactly in the presynaptic neurons, it binds to the auto-inhibitory site and prevent the release of norepinephrine and other neurotransmitters. But when you don't have neurotransmitter like norepinephrine, then you're not having the sympathetic activity, and this will help in lowering your blood pressure. The side effect of this medication, again in the heart it causes bradycardia and hypotension and sometimes dizziness. However, this time it causes somnolence. Clonidin has a specific side effect, hypertensive crisis, when someone suddenly stops the medication. And for methyl dopa, it can cause hepatitis or positive Coombs test. Nowadays, we usually don't use this medication anymore, but only in specific situations. Alpha-1 antagonist. Alpha-1 adrenergic antagonist, like prazosine, tyrazosine, and doxycine, works on the blood vessels. Because alpha-1 receptors are found in the blood vessel, and if we blocked it, then we're going to have vasodilation, which can help in lowering the blood pressure. It's also good to know that alpha-1 is found in a smooth muscle, and if you blocked it, then we can cause its dilation, right? So, if someone presented with benign prostatic hyperplasia and hypertension, this medication is actually a good option for them. Side effects. It can cause postural hypertension or first-dose phenomena, which means that a sudden severe fall in the blood pressure, and to prevent this, we recommend taking a low dose at bedtime. It also can cause dizziness, palpitations, and headache. Nowadays, usually these medications are not used as monotherapy. And here is the summary from TeachMed for the first part of hypertension, or the sympatholytic agents.